So a couple of months back in August 2019, we did acquire a male and female pair of Chinese leopard snakes, which I later named Chloe and Rusty, respectively. Now, I originally put them into just sterile, crappy quarantine setups because I wanted to make sure that they were healthy before going into a bioactive enclosure, which is a very important thing to do. But now that it's been a couple of months and I've been able to assess the snakes, I am perfectly happy that they are healthy and that they are ready to go into their long-term bioactive setups. So what we're going to be doing in today's video is continuing the build process which I started in my last upload um, and what we'll be doing is turning the vivarium that I built into a space within which Chloe, my Chinese leopard snake, can thrive. Now as we get into this, make sure that you like the video, leave me a comment so that I know what you think about it and do subscribe to my channel so that you never miss an upload in the future and let's get into the build process. So the first step is to position any rockwork or really heavy woodwork on the base of the vivarium itself. You want to have it like this so that if the snake goes burrowing round in the substrate, it isn't going to have any rockwork or anything tumbling down on top of it, which could be fatal. Now, the only rockwork I am actually using in this enclosure is a piece of slate that I chiseled to fit, um, and it is just propped up on two bits of like plastic egg crate light diffuser stuff just to hold it up so that Chloe can still hide underneath of it. So with the slate in place, I added some damp sphagnum moss to the cool end. The reason for this is that Chinese leopard snakes as a species do really seem to like having a nice cool and damp retreat to go to. They don't want to be kept cool and damp all the time mind, they just need a little bit of that to go to when they need it, and so adding lots of moss to the cool end should provide this. The next and perhaps most important step is to add the substrate. Now I say that this is dead important because it is the substrate that is going to support the entire ecosystem that you are going to be building up inside this enclosure. Now with that in mind, what I'm using is a mixture of Arcadia's Earth Mix Arid, coconut fibre to hold a bit more humidity and then all topped off with orchid bark just to provide a bit more organic matter for the cleanup crew to dig into at a later date. We now add the main portion of the decoration to the enclosure, which in this case is going to be mostly cork bark. Now the thing to do here is to make sure that what you're doing is actually going to provide a usable environment for whatever species you're setting up the enclosure for. Now with this in mind, Chinese leopard snakes are a very, very timid species that often does hide when you walk in the room, but to, unlike the other extreme, they are really rather inquisitive and they are interested in what you're up to. So thinking about this, I've made sure to put cork bark all the way along the enclosure so that the snakes can remain hidden at all times and can also have a little vantage point peeping the head out of all sorts of different holes so that they can do like what they really like to do, which is hide away and watch things whilst they feel safe. In my experience, as long as you set something up that is usable for the animal, like I've just described, um, you are going to make something that just looks appealing because using natural decorations and setting something up that's usable just seems to look nice when it comes out in the end. Happy with the decoration, I decided to add plenty of botanicals which basically consisted of leaf litter. Now leaf litter does have a very critical function in a setup like this because not only does it provide more of a hiding opportunity for the timid snakes, it does provide a lot more like food and cover for the cleanup crew which I'll get to in a minute. Now leaves and botanicals and twigs and things, most of the time you really do not actually have to buy them and they are very expensive. Um, all of the stuff I'm adding now I actually got from a local park. Um, and if you want to find out how to collect it in a safe way and not introduce anything bad to your setup, then I have made a video about that in the past, so I'll chuck up a link to it now in the top right hand corner of the screen. The last part of setting up the enclosure and getting it ready for Chloe is actually to add the cleanup crew which I've been talking about. Now, cleanup crews are basically what they say on the tin. They are a group of invertebrates, or occasionally some people do use vertebrates, but that's a topic for another day. Um, and the different species you use basically go around and clean everything up. 
Now in this setup, I am using a combination of Dendrobina compost worms, um, tropical grey woodlice, giant orange woodlice, um, the obligatory springtails, which I showed you how to culture in the video that I'll link right now, and also a large array of species of native British woodlice, which are actually courtesy of my biology department in my sixth form, where I go and do my A-levels and stuff. Um, but that's kind of a long story, so we'll leave that one as well. And with that, just give it a few days for the cleanup crew to get settled in and so on, and the enclosure is complete. And of course, the most exciting thing that we've got to do in today's video is to introduce Chloe, the Chinese leopard snake, to her new enclosure. So then guys, I hope that you did enjoy this video and that you took something from it. Um, I mean, it is another vivarium build and it is one that I'm quite proud of um, because it is just like a really usable space for this type of snake. Um, the only things that I'm going to change about it is that I do want to add some more twigs and things, but everything else about it I'm happy with because it's usable and it's also got some proper good technology in there with an Arcadia DT projector. Um, and of course an Arcadia Shade Dweller unit with us providing the UV for the snake. But with that, that is the end of the video and I will see you in the next one. So keep following Nature's Example and I'll see you then. Bye guys!